Butler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you and the ranking member for holding the hearing. Thank you to our witnesses for joining. Ms. Uh, Felcher, um, uh, a particular appreciation for you. Um, there are four of you on the panel and you have done a lot of talking. Uh, and so I appreciate you being uh, responsive and engaged to the Senator's questions. I wanna just quickly go back to the ranking member's point which I think is a valid one. Um, if there's uh, not a pot of resources for people to, um, to be, for victims to, to be compensated from, um, then how can we expect um, people to, to be reimbursed? And so I, the ranking member made an um, important declaration that, that no one quite responded to. And I just wanna give you the opportunity to respond for our clarification and for greater understanding um, the ranking member Johnson made the note that Zill was free. And so I, it made me want to understand a little bit more, um, uh, Mr. Fowler, as the chief executive officer of Early Warning Services that owns and operates Zill, um, is Zill a nonprofit? Thank you, Senator. We, we run the Zell network on a cost recovery basis. But is it a nonprofit? It is a, it is a company, it's a corporation. Got it. I, I, I just want to, again, I want to make sure, and are, there are fee structures that are associated with the owners of Zell for the utilization of its services, research, all of those things. Indeed, indeed, Senator. So consumers don't pay fees. The banks, the financial institutions, I should say, who who participate in the Zelle network, 2,100 financial institutions, uh, they pay fees to use the network and provide uh, that that network uh, through their banking app to their consumers. But the and am I to understand then to our financial institution operators that the um, fees that are charged for account holders. Uh, at your institutions to maintain those accounts or the cert are the funds that you then utilize to pay for Zell? Can I, can I take that one, Senator? Banking um, institutions, please. I, so, I, as I'm, I was not gonna allow Ms. <laughs> Felcher to respond. So we, so, so we don't charge for Zell in any, in any format. We don't charge to send a Zell transaction. We don't charge to receive a Zelle transaction. Um, we and the other banks in the network pay EWS at a per transaction basis to provide that service to us. So, so for us, so a Wells Fargo account holder does pays no fees to Wells Fargo. There's, there's no there's no fees directly for Zelle for. I'm not the, asking for a Zelle. I'm asking. I, I think you know the question that I'm asking, so I want to just sort of cut to it. Zell is Zell is provided for free for all account types, no matter what the charge is for the account type. So, um, whether the account so there is are customer charged account fees that allow you to accumulate the resources that pay for the creation of this shared service. Well, I I, th I think what does not exist, Senator, is there's no there's nothing analogous to what Senator Johnson was talking about that there's a swipe fee or, or a, a, mer, a merchant charge associated like you have in the cart, the debit card and the, and the sure. credit card network. So there's no direct revenue source associated with that comes in for Zelle. I think that was the point. But there is an underlying revenue source that allows you to create the investment to, to create this organization. I will move on. I think the point has been made. We, we um, have, a, uh, I think, an understanding. Let me, I have spent a lot of time on, on, on this committee really trying to understand how um, these um, investigative operations that the chairman and a ranking member bring forward, um, how they truly impact not just people who are, um, you know, of age today, but future generations, how are we thinking about the tool, not just the technology um, evolution, but the user uh, evolution? And I was looking at the data, given that none of you dispute the data that has been um, presented um, by the report of the committee, I was looking at the data and was um, a, a bit wondering, what would be your explanation for the growing um, reimbursement decline of younger bankers. 
Is it that they are uh, more apt to um, participate online and those are frequently denied uh, reimbursements? Is it that they are, uh, I, I'm trying to prompt you to under, help me to understand the particular experience of uh, bankers who are you know, people who are participating in your financial institutions between the ages of 18 and 30 who are getting reimbursed at a much lower level uh, than people who are much older than, than they are. Mr. Monaco. Uh, Senator, um, the, the safety of all our customers is top priority no matter what the age. Um, you know, I think our younger customers are at varying stages of financial literacy. So if they're if they are you know, under uh, 18 or 16, you know, the parents are probably best situated to guide them uh, through their journey. Um, I think that um, uh, you know we we. Uh, so let me stop you, Mr. Monaco, because I'm, I'm running short on time, but that was an important point. That I, that, um, and, and so how are you then specifically at Bank of America, I believe you're from, how are then you then specifically um, protecting young, younger, uh, young bankers uh, in connection to uh, uh, their sort of susceptibility, um, or what are, you, what are you doing specifically towards younger bankers? Uh, sure, Senator. Uh, well, so at, at Bank of America, if if a um, if a if a young person is less than 16 years old, uh, they they have to be on entitled on an account with the parent, and it's up to the family to enroll in Zelle. And uh, as they um, and ultimately they can choose to use the, the solution or not. The the parent um, can receive uh, as the primary can receive notification. Um, by email uh, of uh, payments that are sent. They can also uh, choose to, to deregister Zelle so they don't have to use it. If you're under 13, you cannot use Zelle at Bank of America. And so um, uh, we also uh, have a working group uh, that is specifically working on developing new controls for our younger users. And Bank of America also invests in a financial literacy challenge for our middle school and high school age youth, uh, and of which um, education around fraud and scams is, uh, is a component. Um, thank you, Mr. Monaco. I appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, I am out of time. I would um, like to submit this line of questioning uh, for the record. Unfortunately, I won't be able to remain for the next round, um, but I do want to understand more what we are doing to engage in the financial literacy as um, our uh, young leaders are growing and evolving in their in their utilization, and I want to understand if Bank of America says at a certain age uh, gives the ability for parents to disable um, Zelle, um, is that the, the case in all 2100 institutions? I, I don't have time for you to answer the question, Mr. Fowler. I'm going to submit the question for the record. I wanted to make sure that you were aware that th there's a series of questions that will be coming from my office, and I look forward to your response. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Butler. Uh, you know, this issue of reimbursement is really fundamental 